All right, we're back. And on the last video, we ended with building a nifty little tool for pressing wrist pins out without deforming the piston or the rod. There's tools you can buy for that, but it's like 1400 bucks. I ain't paying that for it. So I made my own, and now we're gonna find out if it works. Just gonna put a little bit of pressure on it just to make sure that the device we made even will hold up at all. Okay, so this is good. So we've got some pressure on this thing, and as you can see, the piston can still move around in here. So that means we're not putting any pressure on the piston at all. Yeah, I don't like that. It looks like we're putting pressure on the rod over on this end. So what I may actually do is cut this plate right there, I think. And then I'll know we're not bending the rod at all. Okay. Out again. Okay, that's better. I feel much better about that. The rod no longer touches anything out here on the big end. Yeah, we'll see if our little device will actually hold up to some pressure. So what we'll do, because it was actually starting to bend this way, kind of put a U shape to this, is I'm going to put a bar underneath that ties that together, and then it should have no more problems because it actually holds everything pretty straight. It doesn't try bowing like this. Nothing's trying to slip out or pop out or anything. So just strengthen that up across there, and this should actually work pretty darn good. So Brandon must have been feeling energetic because I came into the shop today to find a nice surprise. He made me a little tool for pressing out the wrist pin, and he even made the necessary modifications to this guy so that it won't bend across here anymore. What a nice guy. So now we're gonna go give it a try. Okay. There we go. All apart, bunch of separate pieces. Wow, that worked out perfect. Now I can press wrist pins out without deforming the pistons or the rods. Okay, so now this thing's all disassembled and ready for a bath. This is how you know you're a diehard engine builder. Okay, so before I wash this thing down, I just took and used our own kind of a makeshift deck sander and sand the surface a little bit and then took a straight edge, made sure everything was straight and it actually came out pretty good. And so now we're gonna go through and hone the cylinder. We're shooting for between a 20 and 45 degree cross hatch. And basically what that means is, say we were shooting for a perfect 45 degree, the hone would have to spin at the same speed that we're going in and out of the bore. So you have to go pretty fast in and out to try to achieve that 40, 45 degree angle. You could use a stopwatch timer on your phone or something. Yeah. Give that a go. Okay, 20 seconds each bore. First one starting now. And go. <laughs> That's a workout. Run at full oh, speed and then just go super fast. So if I end up having to uh, to pull out, <laughs> stop it. Yeah, just stop it. I felt like I was slowing down a little bit on that one. We were all st also starting to dry out a little bit, but. I think it got it. Yeah, I think it got it fine. Yeah. That doesn't look like it got super shallow. No. I think it did good. Mm -hmm. All right. Definitely time for a cold beverage now. <laughs> All right. This baby's just about ready for a rotating assembly. You want to make sure these are super duper clean. You want to use a white cloth and make sure there's absolutely no gray coming off on the cloth when you're done. All right, on the next short video, we're going to start putting the rotating assembly together. <laughs> <laughs> mm.
It makes it hard to count the strokes, but. Yeah, and this time, I'm gonna wear my goggles again because I forgot to have those on too. <laughs>